Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, May 10th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Microsoft Patch Tuesday today, of course, a little bit difficult to compare to past Patch Tuesdays given the new format, but I would guess that today's Patch Tuesdays probably would have been one of the smaller ones based on the number of bulletins, maybe five or six bulletins, I think. We do have updates for Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge. Aside from fixing a number of vulnerabilities, this also turns off SHA-1 support in these two browsers. This change will, however, not affect enterprise certificates. So if you have your own certificate authority, then you can still use SHA-1 certificates. That's a nice option if you, for example, have things like cameras. For example, I ran into that uh, that only support SHA-1, so you can still use your own certificate authority for these devices. And then there are patches for a number of .NET Core or ASP.NET Core packages. The vulnerabilities being addressed here can lead to privilege escalation. The tricky part is that these are essentially libraries that you're including in your .NET project. So in order to really apply these patches, you not only have to update the libraries, you also have to include the updated libraries in your project. There is a configuration file that essentially specifies which versions of these libraries you include, and you have to update these configuration files. The vulnerability is really exposed by applications written using these libraries. And then there's an interesting Windows update vulnerability in Windows 10 and Server 2016 that's being patched here. In this case, updates may not be applied if you never logged in to the system. I can see this happen where you have sort of large deployments of, let's say, Server 2016, where you clone virtual machines, you just uh, copy them across your virtual machine infrastructure and you never actually log in to uh, these systems. Systems. The login has to be interactively, so that will essentially jumpstart uh, the auto update. Now, uh, this patch will fix the problem. Of course, you still have to make sure that this patch gets applied. So these are the highlights from Microsoft that I saw. There was also an Adobe Flash update that, of course, got rolled into Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge as well. And just as a reminder, yesterday I mentioned the vulnerability in Microsoft's malware protection engine. That one was patched on Monday and it will be rolled out as part of a signature update. So you probably already had it uh, Tuesday morning. Typically, Microsoft Windows will check at least once a day for updates to its signatures and you don't have to approve these updates. And a little follow up to a story from yesterday. Yesterday I talked about Handbrake. Handbrake is the video conversion utility whose repository was compromised. So users ended up downloading a version that also included malware. Turns out the malware was Snake, which used to be mostly available for Linux and Windows. But actually a week ago, Fox IT reported that they saw Snake also for OS X. It was then described as malware that offers itself as an Adobe Flash update. That's, I think, uh, sort of the most common way how I see OS X malware being offered that it's offered as an Adobe download. In this case, the certificate that was used to sign the malware was a valid certificate for an Apple developer at a time, but it was revoked a couple of months ago. And one of the more interesting exploits being leaked in the recent CIA leak was an exploit against Cisco iOS that actually used the cluster management protocol over Telnet. If you send a specific CMP packet over Telnet to the Telnet server on a switch, you could actually take over the switch. Well, uh, this particular hole is now patched on Monday. Cisco did release a respective patch. 
And Cisco's Talos research team uh, did reveal details regarding a vulnerability in Wolf SSL. Wolf SSL is a fairly lightweight SSL library. That's why you often find it in small devices. The vulnerability here is a certificate parsing vulnerability that can lead to code execution. And that's also a good reminder that while a lot of people focus on OpenSSL, which is of the big SL library that everybody's talking about, there are a number of different SL libraries out there. They all have the same problem that ASN.1, the encoding being used for SSL, is notoriously difficult to parse securely and efficiently, which leads to vulnerabilities in pretty much any implementation of SSL. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.